Take it away, Jim. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much, Matt. And welcome to the third of uh, many uh, panel discussions we're going to have on the coastal Virginia offshore winds. Uh, as Matt said, I'm Jim Carroll. I'm the uh, VP of Small Business for the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. Uh, but I have a second hat in that I am the Executive Director of the Small Business Development Center of Hampton Roads. And what we are is a nonprofit entity that provides business advice to small businesses, uh, either startups or existing. And we'll be working very closely with Steve Holcomb, with Doug Scheib and Sean Reed uh, in bringing this panel to go, well, in bringing the Coastal Virginia Wind Program uh, into fruition. So with that, I would like to now turn it over to Steve Holcomb and he'll talk about uh, Gen Edge. Steve. Thanks, Jim. Um, can somebody give me a thumbs up on the panel if you're hearing me okay? You're good. Okay, great. Good, thanks. Uh, Steve Holcomb, I'm the regional Gen Edge manager for the Hampton Roads region. And if you had a room full of 100 people, business people in Virginia and asked them, have you heard of Gen Edge? Maybe five or 10 hands would go up. Sadly, we're not as well known as we'd like to be. We're working on that. But you can think of Gen Edge as a consultancy to, to small and medium sized business. Uh, we're part of a national program under the US Department of Commerce, which created this program called Manufacturing Extension Partnership, uh, created that back in the early 90s. And it was one of many attempts to try to help manufacturing businesses be more successful as we were becoming less and less competitive with uh, uh, manufacturers who were shipping US. And so we've been around since the mid 90s here in Virginia. Uh, Gen Edge works with about 200 Virginia companies a year. Uh, we have a, a, a track record we're very proud of uh, that a dollar spent with Gen Edge on average results in $25 of benefit to the, to the client companies. And that's as they as reported uh, in surveys that NIST does as a follow-up every time we work with a client. When we started out, it was just manufacturing clients that we worked with. Today, we work with all sorts of companies. I'm currently working with a drone company, a wastewater treatment company, two IT uh, cybersecurity providers, and a couple of manufacturers here in Hampton Roads. Um, we are partially funded by Department of Commerce and part, partially funded by the state of Virginia. So we're a consultancy that companies can hire and our fees tend to be about a third to a half of what you'd pay if you uh, went in the yellow pages and looked for a consultant to hire. Kind of showing my age when I mentioned the yellow pages. But if you went out and found a private consultant on your own to help you with a business problem, uh, they, they'd be typically uh, <coughs> twice or three times as high as Gen Edge. So give us a call if uh, you have a business problem you either can't solve or don't have the resources to solve. Uh, our website is genedge.org. And uh, as I said, I'm covering the Hampton Roads area, so you can always reach out to me. Back to you, Jim. Steve, thank you very much. And now what I'd like to do is turn it over to the stars of the show today. Steve and I are just co-stars. Uh, Doug Scheib and Sean Reed from Dominion Energy. So, gents, over to you guys. Good morning. Um, welcome to everyone from Dominion Energy. We're happy that you're here. We're excited about the offshore wind project that we have in development, and we hope we can answer some questions for you today as uh, part of the series of uh, ongoing symposiums about what we do, and Sean and I come to you from our supply chain department. I'm a project manager in supply chain and working with many of our internal customers to ensure they get to the market, to find people like you to ensure that uh, we do the best job possible installing this and put up a great uh, uh, source of energy, uh, source of renewable energy for our rate payers. Sean? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Sean Reedy. I'm a category management specialist uh, supporting the offshore wind project. 
um, as well as other renewable projects with Doug. Uh, we are very excited for you all to be here and uh, ready to answer questions and give you some feedback and uh, some information to really help us make sure this project is successful as possible. So we have a pretty clear message for you today, we think. And as you've seen uh, in the recent symposiums, um, there's a lot of work going on. And our message to you from supply chain is register with us, with Dominion, so we know who you are. Train, there's great resources, both with Steve and Jim and other things provided by the state. Research, understand what's going on in this uh, market that's in its infancy, and then market and connect. That's important. So register, train, research, market, and connect. And we want to drop you into the conversation from a very high level. This uh, offshore wind industry is different, and it's in its infancy. It's not like putting a windmill that was onshore offshore. The blades are similar. The concept is similar, but it's a completely different installation. And in the United States, there's really two projects that are up and running. One is our pilot project that we ran. The other is a Block Island project up in Rhode Island. There are others under development, like our larger wind farm that we're talking about here. Uh, but for the most part, everybody is working from the ground up. So you see projects up and down the East Coast. And you, being here in the Hampton Roads area, are in a great position to uh, connect with all of these, centrally located with an amazing port. So there's projects in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. There's US Wind developing a project off Maryland and Delaware. Atlantic Shores is developing a project off New Jersey, as is Liberty Wind. Empire Wind is, has a project in New York under development. Vineyard one and two in Massachusetts is well underway, as is Mayflower in Massachusetts. So um, while it's in its infancy, it's growing quickly and it will continue uh, to do that. And you're in a good position here in Hampton Roads to make that happen. Um, this is a uh, technology that is largely in place in Northern Europe. UK, Denmark, Netherlands, some of the Scandinavian countries have um, projects well underway and have been providing power uh, for many years now. Uh, Southeast Asia has some projects underway as well. Um, we encourage you to research and find out who's developing those projects. Those are the players that we're working with for our, RFP, our RFPs as our primary suppliers. Um, and there's a couple of websites that we're going to reference you to throughout the day. And I'll start by mentioning a couple of them. One is the uh, midatlanticocean.org. And that is the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council uh, on the Ocean, or MARCO. And they have a, a website that you can go to to find out more about projects in this area. There's also the Bureau of uh, Ocean Energy Management, BOEM. They have a site as well, boem.gov. That will help you understand the scope of projects up and down the East Coast and things that are being looked at by uh, our friends on the regulatory side. Um, as for training, we mentioned that's important. I'll mention a third website for you. That's vaoffshorewind.org. And that site uh, has some great resources for you. And if you go to that um, website, you will find a connection at the top. One of the links is Workforce. And under Workforce, you'll see great resources provided by the Commonwealth of Virginia and their educational partners to ensure that um, your employees, your business has access to training about offshore wind, which is Again, different than onshore wind or certainly other energy sources that we have. So that's a, a, a drop into where we are and a little bit about Dominion uh, generally before Sean talks about the connection with the supply chain. So um, we have two offshore projects. We mentioned one, the pilot, which is up and running. It went very well. That's enabled us to move ahead and build our larger uh, offshore wind farm that is uh, 27 miles offshore uh, from Virginia Beach. And it has several different components to it. 
There's engineering, which is geophysical and geotechnical elements to it. There's foundations, which are monopiles and transition pieces as you build this up. Uh, there's environmental, there's floating LIDAR, environmental impact studies, other things involved with making sure we do this properly, safely, and um, in line with all the regulations that we need to follow. There's insurance, uh, there's substations that are offshore that connect uh, the different parts of the farm and send the energy onshore. There's trans, uh, excuse me, transportation and installation that brings all these pieces together and installs them. There's the wind turbine generators. Uh, there's turbine supply agreements. There's long-term service agreements. We have vessels that are involved with this, crew transfer vessels, standover vessels, jack-up vessels to help with the building. There's operations and maintenance, including software to help um, track parts of this project. So it's a huge un undertaking and we, look, we, we, have, we need a lot of partners and Sean is gonna talk about how to uh, connect you with Dominion for this project. Thanks, Doug. So really, what, how do you do business with us? It's really registering in our system. Um, there's two ways you can go about that. The Coastal Virginia uh, Offshore Wind website that's listed um, in the chat feature has a function where you can register in Ariba in our system, or you can also go to Dominion Energy's website and look up suppliers and register there. During your registration, we ask that you um, tell us how we met. So in the conferences, please make sure you put in Hampton Roads Alliance CVAL Friday Forum. That way we can easily recognize your interest in the project. Um, the other things too, that just to note, once you've completed that registration, we will then be able to send you questionnaires to determine what uh, qualifications and capabilities you have so we can easily identify um, what projects we could potentially work with you on, whether you would be a prime supplier or whether you would be a uh, subcontractor. Those questionnaires are going to last about two weeks. So make sure when you get that information, you uh, uh, complete that uh, as quickly as possible. Those questionnaires will have everything from uh, what type of supplier you are, what type of services you offer, uh, do you offer materials, we'll ask you safety information, we'll ask you environmental information, financial history. Uh, we'll ask you your classification as well, whether you are under the Commonwealth of Virginia a SWAM owned business or if you're another designation that uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia does not recognize. Uh, and just to also throw this out as a caveat, when we look at and ask you for your information, if you might not meet that uh, level of threshold for a project right away, don't be discouraged. Uh, it may not be that right fit right now, but we will always keep you in mind for other potential opportunities that come through. A little bit about what we look for. Uh, at Dominion Energy, safety is, is our first and one of our big core values. Uh, so we ask suppliers to tell us how you are working safely. A lot of that information will be found in your OSHA 300 and 300A logs, as well as your workers' compensation insurance uh, rate, um, as well as any OSHA citations you may be that you may have received from the state of Virginia or other localities. Um, once we do that as well, we'll also ask you for environmental. That's another major component for us as well. We wanna make sure that whatever suppliers that we work with um, or even have the potential to work with are working safely in an, and in an environmentally friendly way. Uh, so we'll ask you information regarding your training. Um, if you've ever had any uh, violations or notices that were sent over to you, we'll also ask you for that information and figure out how well you are really working uh, environmentally. Um, along with that uh, information, uh, if you were trying to figure out where would you get that, some of that information will, may be provided by DEQ in Virginia or your other uh, state options. Um, supplier information, like we said earlier, we want to know more about you. We don't necessarily know what expertise or uh, niches that you may have or where your technical sweet spot is. If you're primarily located in the Tidewater area and that's your main focus of business, we want to know. Um, we want to know more about you so we can understand where we could potentially work with you on other projects, uh, whether it is the offshore wind project or another renewable project or something completely different. We want to be able to know that information. We'll also ask you information regarding your insurance. Um, that is another big item as well. We want to make sure that uh, you have the right um, insurance limits and limitations to not only protect us, but also protect you. 
Um, we'll ask you financial history. We want to make sure that whatever supplier that we work with, they are financially solvent and strong enough to handle whatever project we throw their way. Um, so that's another uh, major item as well. And then we also want to make sure we know how you are classified. So whether you are a um, small business, woman-owned business, minority-owned business, veteran-owned, um, disabled, LGBTQ, um, service disabled, small disadvantaged, hub zone. We want to know those. Uh, that just gives us more information to see who's out there and who's interested. Um, again, when we look at that, we're not just looking primarily at um, how you have filled out this information, but we're also seeing what that sweet spot would be and figure out what projects we could then uh, include you in on. Yeah, and I would add that registering there is important and we want as many options as possible for our offshore wind projects, but it also puts you in line for other projects that we have. We're a, we're a large utility, we're a large player in the energy space. We have lots of projects across the spectrum of how we um, generate and distribute energy. And you may enter through that portal with us and be eligible for another project. You may jump right into the offshore wind project and be considered there, but please find a way to register and make yourself available for all of our projects. And for those of you who may not be as familiar with offshore wind and what it looks like and, and um, just how the mechanisms themselves um, are built and used, we have a, a fifth link that we can provide for you. And we have an offshore wind farm installation video. Now you can find others as you research and connect through the other sites that we talked about. But that may help you when you get off this call to look and start to understand what it looks like as we uh, build the wind farm uh, itself. Well, Doug and Steve, Sean, thank you very much for the uh, outstanding information. Uh, we had a couple of questions that came in uh, in the registration period. I'd like to run them past you if I could. Uh, the first one, we've had quite a few questions concerning the use of advanced materials, uh, among other things, structural fiberglass, ultra high performing concrete, and other materials and products. Uh, how do companies go about making themselves known to your organization and, and the, whether or not they're applicable to the project? So make sure you go to the uh, link we have for offshore wind uh, program where you can register as a supplier there, or you can um, go to our normal website and register as a supplier. We need to know you exist. We need to know, as Sean said, what you can provide, what's unique, what's, what's innovative that you do. Um, remember also to when, when you register, uh, if you haven't already, note that this conference was how you entered. That is one way we can also search to find those specifically interested in when. Um, when you um, register as a supplier, give us your applicable NACE code, your North American Industry Classification System code. That's important. That's how we search as well. So if a prime supplier that we contract with here in the coming months says, I need somebody that does service or materials X, we can search that through the NACE code. Uh, this ensures you have the broadest visibility when we search for potential suppliers. Um, please include information about those innovative products that you have. Don't assume that we know them. Um, help us understand how you see those as a, a better way or a more efficient way for us to generate and distribute power. We have a robust innovation team at Dominion Energy. It's a very important part of our business. Um, and we have a lot of experienced and market savvy engineers, but we may not know about what you do and we need to know that. So please promote that. Um, if you have contacts in Dominion Energy, use them. If you don't have contacts, start to make them. It's a sales process and you're not gonna register and the light bulb's gonna go off and we're gonna send you a contract the next day. It's part of a process for us understanding who you are, including you with prime suppliers or other work that we have um, across the board. Um, as well as um, you knocking on doors, making sure we understand what it is you do, keeping us educated on your products and um, 
presenting yourself as a partner to us. Um, if you're in an RFP uh, with us and uh, your product, you may have other products that are innovative or, or you think revolutionary or uh, more efficient for the uh, generation or distribution system of power, make sure you reply to the RFP as it's listed, but also you can use then that form as an additional way to educate us on other things that may be available as well. Um, and we also encourage you to use Hampton Ro uh, Roads resources like those offered by Jim and Steve and others uh, to help you connect with companies, with, with us and other companies um, to ensure that we know who you are and you present yourself well. Uh, Jim, Steve, and others can really help tee you up and ensure that we understand what those innovative products and materials are that you have. Doug, thank you very much. Uh, we have one that uh, came in from the audience, and that is, if you are a supplier already, I'm assuming registered with Dominion Ener Energy, uh, do you need to deregulate or update your registry to indicate marine qualifications? So I'll take this one, not necessarily. Um, if you have information that uh, might be updated or it needs to be updated to include yourself, go ahead, by all means do that. Um, you do not have to do another re-registration again in the system though. Um, if at all, if you have something that you're interested in doing and, and working with us, by all means, reach out to you know, any contacts you may have at Dominion Energy and say, hey, I'm interested. Um, and even for those that have already done the registration prior to this, um, just let us know and we'll make sure to include you in on uh, our review and your capabilities. Super. Thank you, Sean. Uh, the next question is for actually Steve and me. And uh, that is, are there fun is it, there any available funding for manufacturers who need to upgrade their facilities in order to participate in this program? Uh, Steve, I'll give you the first bite of the apple and I'll take the second one. Well, and that that's always a question with biz, small to medium sized businesses in Virginia. Does somebody have some money and can I have some of it? Uh, and I understand that need. Um, let me let me just explain from the Gen Edge point of view. We don't have bags of money that we give out. Occasionally, we will run programs that are um, that are sponsored by investors like Department of Defense or Go Virginia, who'll set aside money to cover part of the cost of improvement initiatives, but but not from Gen Edge generally. The way you get uh, benefit from Gen Edge is that we're already partially funded by Department of Commerce and the state of Virginia. Two thirds of our operating costs are covered. So we can be a low cost provider of consulting services to help small to medium sized businesses solve their tough business problems. Um, it's going to cost you something to work with Gen Edge. And generally, uh, if you're going to partner with anyone, whether it's Dominion Energy or NASA or Port of Virginia or uh, Newport News Shipbuilding, you're going to have to most likely pay money out of your pocket to, to do the work to get if there are unique qualifications or unique process improvements. So you just, you're going to have to be ready for that. You're going to have to be ready to that you're gonna to have to pay some of your money. Now, what I hope uh, Dominion is gonna consider, uh, and I haven't talked to these guys about this, but that perhaps down the road, they may consider doing something like uh, uh, the Port of Virginia does or NASA or Newport News Shipbuilding, where they set aside uh, funds that, uh, uh, that their supply chain can apply for, for for help with process improvements. But I haven't heard any discussions of that as yet. There are, there are also um, resources out there in the state of Virginia like VEDP, Virginia Economic Development Program, and VDEP, uh, I won't even try to decode that one, and uh, Jim's Virginia Small Business Development Council, and the city and county economic development agencies occasionally have money to cover certain things like training. But if you, if you come to Gen Edge and say, hey, I gotta have a quality management system and I don't have one, can you help us set one up? The answer is yes. And here's, here's what it's gonna cost you to do that. 
Jim. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, from the SBDC perspective, uh, first and foremost, there are no grants at this time uh, from either the federal, uh, state, or local uh, funding. So please take grant funding off the table in your consideration. Uh, the SBA has two loan programs. Uh, one is called the 7A loan program, which is a working capital loan uh, program that provides small businesses with funding and allows them to, to meet their expenses and generate the revenues necessary to uh, become profitable and then pay back the loan. Uh, that's strictly for working capital and it does have some real estate uh, considerations as well. Uh, there's a second loan program that's out there called the SBA 504 loan, which is for real estate, buildings, and very large equipment purchases. I'm talking about printing presses large, something that has to come in on a tractor trailer. Uh, the 504 is a fascinating program in that 50% of the loan comes from a bank and the bank takes the first position on the uh, lien. The next 40% comes from a certified development corporation. Uh, and we have a certified development corporation here in Chesapeake called uh, 504 Capital. I happen to sit on their board of directors. And then 10% comes from the uh, actual borrower. So the 50-40-10 loan. And that is a very, very flexible and valuable tool for people to have. Uh, last but not least, if you start to get contracts, and you are starting to develop invoices, uh, you can look at something called factory. And that is done through organizations like Beach Commercial Financing and others, where they will buy the invoices that you have, the outstanding invoices that you have, and uh, they will pay you the money up front, but at a, at a discount. So you have to understand there's going to be a cost of capital involved in any, any of these endeavors, and you have to factor that into your planning as you move forward. So no grants, 7A, 504, and factoring. And now let's go to the next question. And that is, uh, there have been several questions asking about specific services, uh, commercial diving, offshore and onshore staffing needs, engineering and inspection services, and training and certification for offshore craft crews. Uh, how do companies learn about any opportunities in these areas and uh, other fields? So um, like we said a little bit earlier, it's more about the research um, and, and marketing and networking out that for through those opportunities. Um, you know, it, it, and again, like we said earlier with the number of projects that are going on um, with Belmont, it's not just here in Virginia, it's not just here in North Carolina, but it's all up and down the East Coast. Um, so really knowing what those projects are and knowing what their needs are moving forward and really positioning yourself um, to get in front of the problems or get in front of those major uh, major owners at this point um, will be extremely helpful for you to do that. Um, the other thing too that you probably want to do as well is, you know, not in terms of, you know, reaching out to those groups, also network with advocacy groups and professional organizations, institutions, colleges, uh, universities that have a footprint or have the information or, or access to that information to support you. Uh, you know, with Virginia being, you know, a major hub for naval and, and marine type work with Hampton Roads and Norfolk, uh, Newport New Shipbuilding, uh, you know, that it's probably a key item right there as well to start really networking with them and understand what that is. So again, register with them, uh, register with them and register with us if you get the opportunity to register with them. Um, inform us about what your scope of work is going to be. Uh, tell us what work you can do. How do you do that? Um, that way we can easily get some of that information and figure out where those opportunities will lie. Um, also know this as well, that sometimes the process does take a little bit of time. So it's not something that's a, you know, a, a flick of a switch. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for us to narrow down what we need to get, um, for a project to be successful as well. So as soon as we understand that, that would make, uh, you know, that, that gives you that information too, to be prepared and set up for diving or craft or, or, or crew work or in their inspection or engineering work. Super, thank you very much. Uh, the next question uh, is more along the contracting side of the house, and that is, um, how do smaller companies, you know, the small business, a small to medium enterprise, uh, 
who want to be subcontractors on this project get in front of the prime contractors? And then the second part of that question is, does the Virginia Clean Energy Act mandate hiring, mandated hiring requirements get implemented and how does that happen? So how do small companies get in front of the subcontractors? It sounds a little bit repetitive, but we have to know you exist. So you have to be in our system. You have to register and work with us to make sure you understand who you are. This, how, as we mentioned, this is a technology and um, really an entire energy sector that has been developed in Northern Europe. The companies that we are working with are largely, and the, and the companies that we will ultimately hire as our primary suppliers are largely based in Northern Europe at this time. That said, we have requirements of them and they have needs and expectations themselves that there are local and diverse and disadvantaged uh, businesses uh, that they want to connect with as well here. Um, so if you register, we can get you in front of them. And as a small um, business, it doesn't matter where you, the size of your business, it matters what you do and how well you do it for us to be able to put you in front of those suppliers. I would also say that working with Steve and Jim and others that can help you if you're a, a small business uh, will be to your advantage to make sure that you're maximizing what you need to do, present yourself properly, find resources that you may not have that you need in order to um, put yourself in a better position. So register with us, ensure we have your capabilities and experience, work with your resources locally and in the community. Um, as for the Virginia Clean Energy Act and requirements that it has, um, uh, it requires us, it says, we shall provide options for local veterans and historically disadvantaged communities. The good news for everybody, including us, is that that's part of our daily operations now. We have goals and criteria for selections every day for all our RFPs that um, we look for local, veteran-owned, historically disadvantaged communities. Sean went through the list earlier of things that we consider and are important to us that we help um, represent from the community because everyone's our customer and we want to uh, have, a, have a broad uh, supply chain of suppliers, but we also uh, want to help grow those businesses and um, maximize our supply base as well. So you may think that being a small business um, is a disadvantage for you dealing with a large business like us. From our perspective, it may be an advantage for you because we don't want to have our supply chain limited to us as a large business dealing with just another large business. We want to have uh, a broad base and that includes large, medium and small businesses and also helping to grow businesses. There are numerous examples that we have. I can think of one um, that helps us provide uh, electrical and instrumentation and control items that we've help grown from one purchase order in 1999 to now a multi-million dollar supplier for us. And that's a small business um, that we worked with to grow. So um, don't think you um, have no chance because you do. And in fact, you may have an advantage um, in helping us grow our supply base. Doug, thank you very much. That's a great answer. Um, one that came in in the registration was, are there offshore or an onshore environmental studies and permitting opportunities available? Um, we're currently in the bidding process for some of those right now. Um, however, uh, I will tell you to, um, to continue to register. Um, it helps us to understand what other projects may be coming in the pipeline that you may be good fits for. Uh, like we stated earlier with some of the projects that are going on from environmental um, perspective with the uh, studies and the LIDAR that's going on, uh, there might be other projects down the road uh, that we're still working on with the project team um, for construction and potentially even operations of the facility itself. Uh, you know, we want to make sure this is a competitive market. We want to make sure that we're looking at the right suppliers to help us with the project that will make it successful. So. Uh, 
just continue to keep an eye out for projects and, and other opportunities that you might hear about what's going on, um, looking at the requirements that are listed by BOEM. Um, and also just kind of keeping a, a quick pulse on what we have going on as well and reaching out when you think that there might be a project going on. You also may be a, uh, if you provide environmental studies, it's likely that you do that more than just for offshore. So make sure that you keep uh, in front of us for other capabilities that you have. We have environmental studies going on all the time. Uh, it's very important to what we do to make sure that we provide safe and environmentally friendly uh, forms of energy. And that involves a lot of studies for planning and building as well as for the ongoing operations of our facilities. So it's offshore wind certainly, but there's other opportunities as well. And, and Jim and Steve, if I could follow up quickly, you, you were, talking earlier about sources of funding that were available, I would encourage people not to discount money that may still be, uh, be available for pandemic relief. Um, that may not help you uh, specifically with onshore, but a lot of businesses have suffered. We've seen a lot of people in our supply chain that have taken a hit because of uh, a variety of reasons associated with the pandemic. Make sure you exhaust all your resources to you to, uh, uh, find money that can help you uh, get back to where you should be or get back on your feet as the case may be or put into your um, uh, balance sheet and income statements so that you can maybe move forward and use that to help you advance. Doug, absolutely. And thank you for bringing that up. Steve? Yeah, um, just kind of along those same lines of funding, because I know that's near and dear to many people's hearts. Ray White uh, from the Virginia Beach Economic Development Office Put a, put a very useful comment in the chat. Uh, it's got a time link on it of 933 if you wanna go hunt for it. But, but he said uh, accurately that most local economic development organizations have funding programs to help companies grow and expand. This funding is typically based on investment and new full-time jobs a company will hire. And then, it, and then he gives the link to the Virginia Beach Economic Development uh, website. Every city and all 10 cities and all six counties in Hampton Roads uh, each have an economic development office. And so, and I don't have any control over those funds. Jim doesn't have any control, but if you're located in Newport News or Virginia Beach or Norfolk, it's worth your while to, to go talk to your economic development folks about entering this market to see what might be available uh, if it was gonna lead to creation of new jobs. Absolutely. And the first place to go would be the economic development website or the city's website uh, to find the, the initial information so that when you go in, you're prepared for the discussion and you're, you'll maximize your time with the economic development people. Uh, one question that came up in the uh, chat room was, I'm currently a Dominion BHE contractor at Cove Point. Uh, would a re-registration be needed to participate in CVAL? Um, I would say no, not at this time. However, if you are still not seeing anything uh, in the system, um, reach out to any of your contacts um, with Dominion Energy, whether it's going to be on that BE, uh, BHE side or um, a DEV employee or our services employee. All right. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, then a second question. In addition to registering with Dominion, and Virginia Offshore Wind. Is it possible to schedule direct qualification presentations with Dominion Offshore Wind representatives? You should, in your registration, list contacts that we can uh, reach for more information and help us uh, understand what it is that you'd like to put forward. Um, Yes, you can do that. And as I mentioned, it's part of a normal sales process. So registering with supply chain is one part of it. Promoting yourself properly within that registration is helpful for us so we can reach out back to you and forward that to other people who may solicit that from you. At the same time, um, no good sales organization is static and waits for someone to walk by your store, so to speak. You do need to reach out to find contacts um, in Dominion and work to find uh, 
ways to then give us educational presentations on, on what it is you do. You know how it works, it's typically nine meetings or nine calls before you get a meeting and maybe nine meetings before you get a job. But you should definitely undertake that. Our door is not closed. The website is not put up as a wall and a, and a herding pin for suppliers. It's meant to be a gate so that you can walk through that gate. We can help direct you as we understand your information, but it also then allows you when you go to your contacts or make your contacts to say, we're already registered. You already have our information. It's available to you. Let us help you understand how we can be helpful to you in offshore wind or other areas. Steve, uh, yes. Jim, if I could just, just add to that or, or write that pony a little bit. Doug, um, some organizations who buy services uh, conduct industry days. Do you think uh, Dominion Energy is is planning to have an inter uh, I'm sorry, an industry day where uh, these suppliers and vendors could show up and meet and greet people? One uh, event that we have on a regular basis for uh, across the business uh, is run by Dallas Simmons in our supplier diversity group. And that is for um, those various groups that are uh, di considered diverse spend or disadvantaged organizations. And, and um, if you haven't um, registered with us, helped us understand that you're part of those groups, you need to let us know that so that Dallas and his group can reach out to you and invite you to those regular events we have. As we contract with these sub, uh, excuse me, with these primary suppliers and we're looking for subcontractors, it is likely that we will have some introductory meetings, either one-on-one -on -one or uh, even, even um, perhaps larger group uh, meet and greets so that uh, we can put the right people together with them. I don't know, uh, if it's going to take the form of the regular uh, large events like uh, Dallas has and some other uh, uh, events that we've run for different projects, but it's likely that we will have some type of one-on-one uh, -on -one or small group events in the future at, once our primary uh, suppliers help us understand what they're looking for so we can put the right people in the room for them. Uh, thank you very much, Doug. And uh, one that just came in, <clears throat> it's probably a little early in the process, but the question is, does Dominion have a list of upcoming RFPs related to the project? Um, right now, we're still working on trying to get a full list. Um, you know, with this project being in its infancy across the United States, it's a little bit uh, I won't say difficult, but it is somewhat of a challenge to make sure we understand every nuance uh, to make the project successful. So when we find out what those projects are, we typically will work with the project team and figure out what needs to go on. Um, the current list that we talked about earlier are what is actually active in the system or have I been identified at this point. Um, when we continue to get more, we will definitely, uh, you know, make sure we, it, when you've registered in the, or uh, when you've registered in Ariba, um, and it, you meet those qual meet, might meet those qualifications for the capability or expertise. We'll definitely keep you in mind. And, and as a reminder, uh, those that are already underway, uh, that may have subcomponents later, engineering, uh, foundations, which are monopiles and transition pieces, environmental, insurance, uh, substation, transportation and installation or the or the balance of plant as we call it the, the building and transporting of all the materials uh, the wind turbine generators the vessels uh, operations and maintenance and um, that is a big one long term and that has uh, lots of implications and there are likely to be further RFP certainly in the long term um, servicing uh, and supply of these um, uh, of this wind farm. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we have another question. This is probably way too early in the process, but how is Dominion Energy involved in the managing, in managing the lifting and erecting of the various steps in building the offshore wind tower? So our, I, 
make sure make sure I, I have this right. I think the question is how are we involved in the uh, construction and manufacture of the uh, actual uh, turbines themselves? The yes, sir. I, that's what I'm assuming. It says, you know, how are you involved in managing the lifting and erecting of the various uh, steps and building the offshore wind tower? We do that with our primary suppliers who are experienced in doing that and have done that uh, across the globe. That's the most important thing we're looking for now is finding uh, the company that can do that um, in the most efficient uh, and cost effective way for our rate suppliers, as well as the safest and environmentally friendly way. Uh, as you can imagine, there's lots of specialized equipment involved in this, and this is not something that's uh, even uh, readily available in the United States for the most part. So we're working with partners that will help us build that and we're vetting uh, them right now. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that pretty well covers the questions that were submitted in advance and uh, the questions that we could answer uh, that have been submitted. Uh, Susie, do you have any others that are pending at this point? Uh, Jim, there was uh, there was some talk as we prepared uh, for this. Um, what I don't know if it's exactly a question, but the, the conversation was around, uh, hey, Dominion Supply Chain, what are core components of the successful bidding practices? What do you look for? What do you consider? What do suppliers do um, that are helpful? And I think Sean and I can can tag team and answer. Um, Together for that, there, there are several components involved that we see from successful bidders. Um, and I think the first one is, uh, have you done your job well so far? Because the first thing we'll look at is your experience, whether it's large or small, uh, whether it's directly related or not related in this case to offshore wind, but are you a solid business with a history of success financially sound operations, a good record of safety and environmental. Um, promising to do that is different than proving that you've already done it. Um, a few other successful things that we see, uh, this may sound ridiculous, but timely responses. There are many times when the project team who develops our criteria for selection um, we'll reach out and ask for uh, additional items, things that maybe weren't in the original RFP, and the responses we get back are days later just that they've received the question. That does not do a lot to build confidence in our project team who's evaluating and selecting the supplier. If they can't respond to my question, how are they going to respond to an emergent need that may arise during the project? Um, something else uh, that again sounds basic, but might be uh, helpful as a reminder. Uh, use professional uh, proposals that focus on the questions asked. You would be surprised how many people just send us their uh, website or their standard materials and think that from that we can glean how they'll specifically relate to our project. Answer the questions that are asked. Uh, you may think there are other things that we might want to know, and you can offer that in addition, but make sure you um, just answer the questions that are asked because that project team with that certain criteria that they have, they're looking for an answer for that for a reason to evaluate what you've done and compare that to others. Um, Sean, you may jump in here too, but uh, some other things that we always talk about, clear and concise communications, uh, put yourself in the shoes of the people evaluating your registration or evaluating your uh, proposal in the process. These are usually busy high level executives that make and approve the selection. If they don't understand what you're saying, it's hard to figure it out. There's a lot of other people that have made a clearer case than you. Um, and last, one of the last things I'll say at this point before I turn it over to Sean uh, for his thoughts is, when you're in a RFP, act as if you're our partner now. Ask questions, don't assume, don't wait for us to drive the conversation. If you see things that may be a gap uh, or an opportunity in our proposal, offer them. Um, if you disagree with an assumption that's been made or even an engineering technical specification that's been offered, we wanna hear that. 
um, we're good, but we're not perfect. Or we may be on the right track and need to take it further. Or we may say, yes, that's something that we're going to discuss down the road uh, in the uh, further negotiations or the best and final round, so to speak. Sean, what are some other things that we've talked about that help people present themselves well? Yeah, Doug, I'm just going to piggyback off that last item too, which I think is, is very critical as well when we look at that. Um, we are not subject matter experts in everything that we do here at Dominion Energy. We have experience of doing, you know, doing power plants. We have experience with transmission and, and power distribution. We have that experience, but we come to you because you have that expertise. So with you telling us, hey, have you thought about X? Have you done Y? Hey, this might be a concern. We want to know those things. So we are truly prepared and understand what the implications would be and how to make these projects successful. Not it, even if it's offshore wind, if it's a solar facility, if it's a new power plant or if it's transmission line, we want to know. Um, the other time too, the other thing too that we, uh, we typically want suppliers to do uh, when you are participating in an RFP or any type of procurement process with us, make sure you understand what we're asking you to, to provide. So if we're asking you to provide a certain format for pricing section or a certain format for our terms and conditions or a certain format for insurance, make sure you comply with that. Um, that helps us to understand, hey, you understand the requirements here and we can easily make sure we understand how you're going about doing the work. Um, another thing too is, you know, do not go outside the system and what we have prescribed to you. That's another key paramount thing. We have our systems in place to make sure it's run efficiently, um, fairly, uh, and that way we can easily make sure we understand what's going on and track the information. A uh, couple of things too, you know, just as a key point, even though we briefly touched on it, understand who we are. Um, you know, we are a large organization and we're not just focused here in Virginia. We are focused in different states across the United States. So understand what our business is, understand our core values, understand our mission, our vision, understand how you can be a part of that to help us in with any project we have going on. Understand what we are doing in the public eye as well. Um, you know, and then also understand where the market will put you in a good position to be as successful and competitive uh, and be strategic in that aspect. Again, when we go to you all, we're, we're, when we come to you all saying, hey, we've got this, we've got this scope of work, we have this project. We're asking you to tell us, hey, this is what we can do to make sure that it's successful. This is what we can do to make sure you're prepared. Um, and hey, we found X, Y, and Z gap, or hey, we found this that might make it more improved and better. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, so those are really some of those highlights that we would want, you know, some of those core competencies and core components for prospective bidders, prospective suppliers, current suppliers, subcontractors, anyone interested in just working for Dominion, not necessarily the offshore wind project, to keep in the back of their mind and put it in front of us. We're often asked, what are the criteria for selection? And that answer is, it's different for every job. It, it, and I'm going to give you a list here of, of things that we consider, and this these are often included in those, but they're also weighted differently. Sometimes, uh, environmental and safety record is weighted more highly in one project than it is on another. One times technical is, is, is higher. Um, the things we look at, your capabilities to deliver the product or service, your capacity to handle the scope of work, your experience in successfully um, delivering similar work, your financial strength, including insurance. We've talked about some of these. Your commercial capability, meaning your ability and willingness to understand and deal with Dominion's terms and conditions. Your technical expertise in design, your safety record, your environmental record we've talked about. Your status as a supplier is very important to us. Again, we'll mention it. If you're a small or diverse or disadvantaged business, that matters to us. We have goals in those categories. We have expectations in working with you directly and with subcontractors. And then People say, well, you haven't mentioned price yet. And that's because we don't look as, at price as price. We look at it as a component of overall cost because overall cost includes pricing. It includes warranties. It includes maximizing construction and product life while minimizing uh, maintenance and repair expenses. It includes efficiency of schedule and other ways to manage that. So um, those are some things we look at in supply chain when 
evaluating your information as a potential uh, supplier or in specific RFP as we help guide our project teams. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. I'd like to turn it over to Matt who will uh, prov provide a wrap up and any, any final comments. Thanks, Jim. Um, thanks to you for hosting and thanks very much to our panelists. Um, that was a very informative discussion and I think of great value to businesses in Virginia that are looking to uh, take advantage of the opportunities around offshore wind and especially with Dominion Energy. Um, so we really appreciate your participation. Um, I will remind folks that we are doing this on a monthly basis and that our next forum will be on May 21st and we will be focusing on uh, workforce development and jobs related to offshore wind. So it's a little bit of a new topic for us and we're very excited um, about the discussion we'll be having um, for opportunities um, for workers that are looking for uh, opportunity in a new industry in the United States in the offshore wind business. So um, you'll be getting information to register for that soon and we will follow up uh, with everybody that registered for this forum um, with a video where you can rewatch or share that with folks too. So thanks for attending and I will end the session there.